at the Lincoln Children's Zoo and I'm here with keeper Davy Ann and I'm Lindsay and I'm here to just ask some questions of Davy Ann about our red pandas. So the first thing that we're going to ask before we get started with the red pandas is why do animals look so different from each other? So animals have different traits or adaptations that they use to survive in their natural habitat. So for instance, if you're in a colder habitat, you need to have thick, um, warm fur. If you live in the desert, um, you might be a nocturnal animal. So you would come out at night and you need to be able to stay warm with a thicker coat or have big eyes to be able to see at night. If you live up in the trees, you gotta be able to have claws or a long tail that allows you to climb up the tree and to balance up in the treetops. So every animal has a little bit different features or different adaptations for what they need to survive in the wild. Okay, so I noticed you named some of the features that these red pandas have. Correct. <laughs> yeah, so tell me about the red pandas that we have here at the Lincoln Children's Zoo. What are some similarities that they all share? So red pandas are an arboreal animal, meaning they live up in the treetops. So they have um, their semi-retractable claws that allows them to climb up into the trees. Um, semi-retractable meaning they're part way out and part way in. So they can keep them nice and sharp when they need to, to use them to climb. Um, they have a nice long tail that acts as a kind of like a rudder or a, a way to balance up in the treetops. Um, it's not a prehensile tail, so they don't use it to grab onto a limb like say a spider monkey would, but they can use it to balance. Um, they also use that tail to act kind of like a scarf. So where they are found naturally, it's a kind of a colder climate. Um, it snows a lot, it rains a lot, so they'll use that tail to kind of wrap around their face like that and then it keeps them nice and warm. So this is a family of pandas that we have here at the zoo. How do you know the differences between them? Yeah, so like you said, they are a family group. So we have a male panda or our dad panda, Rowan, and then we have our mom panda, Tien, and then our two cubs, uh, Robin and William. They do look a lot alike to like the average person coming in and visiting the zoo. Um, to zookeepers, they do have a little bit of differences. So Tien um, is a little bit stockier, bulkier than Rowan is, um, and her face is a little bit lighter in color. Rowan's tail is just a little bit longer than Tien's, um, and it's just a little bit furrier, and so that's how we can kind of tell him apart from him. Um, Tien. And then our cubs are pretty easy to tell from their parents because they're right now they're about half the size as their parents. So they're a lot smaller. But, um, telling the cubs apart is really hard um, at this time. So you have to really look close at their face. Robin's face is um, like a darker, deeper red. And William's face is kind of a lighter, has a little bit of gray and white, more white into his face. Hmm. It's kind of like people. We have different traits and we can tell each other apart. Great. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Exactly. Just a little bit different um, colorations or a little bit different markings to be able to tell each of them apart. How do some of the traits of the red panda help it to survive in its natural habitat? Yeah, so if you look at a red panda, you'll notice that they're a red color. Um, where they're naturally found, there's a red lichen that grows on the trees and on the rocks. So that red color actually helps blend them into their surroundings. The bottom half of them are black. So these guys are an arboreal animal, meaning they live up in the trees. So if you are up in a tree and the bottom half of you is black, when a predator looks up at you, they can't see you because you blend well into the treetop surrounding. So how do the parents help the offspring survive? Yeah, so here at the zoo, um, our dad and our mom and our cubs all live together. But in the wild, um, mom actually lives away from dad. Dad doesn't really have any part in the rearing of the offspring or the cubs. Um, so mom does it all. Um, she has um, a nest, several usually nests, that she puts her cubs in. She'll switch them around depending on um, where she feels safe. Um, and she stays with the cubs for the first few weeks of their life pretty much all the time so she can nurse them um, so they get the nutrition that they need so they can grow. And then as they get older, she'll spend more time away from them so she can go eat and do the things that she needs to do in order to also survive. She'll come back to the cubs and make sure that they're safe and that there aren't any predators around. Um, she will move them if she does feel threatened so she'll move them to a different nest box so that way they feel safe. She stays um, sleeping with them so that way they can also stay warm because um, it is kind of a colder climate where they're from. So she will also sleep with them so that way they can stay nice and warm. Um, she brings like different sticks and different like bamboo and leaves into the box so that way the cubs have kind of a nice like nest area so that way maybe if a predator does like poke their head into the hole of the tree that they're in they might not see the cubs because the cubs are kind of hiding in a little nest area. So what kinds of traits do the red pandas have to help them survive in their climate? 
Yeah, so red pandas live in the Himalayan mountains um, up in like a higher elevation, so it's pretty cold there. It does rain and snow a lot, so they're, adapt, or they're adapted to um, staying warm and staying dry. So they have a really like thick, warm undercoat that allows them to stay nice and warm. Their outer coat is kind of soft, but it is a little bit more coarse because that way it keeps the rain off, um, it keeps them nice and dry underneath. They do have, um, their feet are completely furred, um, so it kind of acts like a snowshoe. So if you look like at your dog or cat at home, you'll see like their little toe beans is what they're called. But on a, on a, on a red panda, it's completely furred. So it acts like a snowshoe where they can walk on the snow, but it also keeps their foot nice and warm. And then even in the inside of their ears, they've got fur on the inside of their ears. So like if you look at your dog or a cat's ear too, like you'll notice you can see their skin, but on a red panda you can, it's completely furred. So they really are adapted to staying warm and staying dry. How do the red pandas get their traits? So they get their traits from their parents. Um, each parent, you know, contributes half of their genetics to them, and so they have everything that they need to survive out in the wild. Hmm. So are the babies exactly like their parents, or is there some variation? So they're not exactly like their parents. Um, you can see some similarities, like Robin has his dad's face completely because it's more kind of triangular and more red and William looks more like his mom as far as he's a little bit oranger has a little bit more gray to his face and his face is rounder but as far as their personalities go they're actually completely the opposite even though Robin looks like his dad he acts more like his mom and even though William looks like his mom he acts more like his dad so they get a little bit from each